Hello and welcome to this webcast. My name is Jacob Crawford and today we'll be talking about all things endpoint for Symantec data loss prevention. We'll start out by checking out how DLP appears to your users on the endpoints and then we'll take a look at how DLP stops data loss by monitoring removable devices, HTTP and HTTPS, monitoring cloud applications like Dropbox, monitoring the Windows clipboard, and even preventing the file from being encrypted by third-party applications like Xcrypt. So without any further ado, let's begin our demonstration. As you can see, on this endpoint, which does have the DLP agent installed, there isn't really any visual cues to make you think that it, there's anything monitoring your data. So if the user goes down to the Windows system tray and looks for a DLP icon, he's not going to find one. The only way that, in fact, anything is visible to the user is by using the task manager. And if you open up the task manager, you'll notice that there's nothing in here that's explicitly called out as endpoint prevent or data loss prevention or anything of that nature. So unless you know what you're looking for, you're probably not going to find anything. And in fact, the DLP agent is this executable right here, which is the edpa.exe. And if you'll notice, it's running as the, the system user privilege level. So if I try and end this process, um, it's not going to let me. And in fact, even if I run this as an administrator, let's do that again. And try to end the same process it's not going to let me. So the DLP software is protected in that way. It's not a process that can be terminated by the user who's logged in. Um, now if you go to look at another process like dropbox.exe, you'll notice the amount of memory it's using is double of what the endpoint agent is using. So it's you can see the endpoint agent uses about 10 megs of data and that might spike up here and there when it's scanning or um, searching for content, searching for confidential data. But other than that, it's not going to um, use a whole lot of system resources. So it's a pretty lightweight application versus something like Dropbox, which is just sitting there. Um, this endpoint agent is protecting you. So now that you've seen how the endpoint agent looks, let's jump into what happens when the user tries to copy different classified data or modify data in a way that's not allowed by your organization. So I have this file here called serial number information. And this is just some mock-up serial numbers which have been declared as confidential in our policy in the Enforce server, which we can take a look at later. But you'll notice that there's some serial numbers in here, um, XLR, 110A. And this is all, you can type in any, you can have the DLP agent monitor for any types of contents or serial numbers or anything like that any keywords for this particular policy. So our policy is monitoring for keywords in this particular case. So and this file will be considered confidential. So any type of action that the user tries to perform on this file which isn't allowed, configured by your policy, will be blocked. So let's take a look at that and just copy this to the desktop real quick and open up a removable device. So let's say that the user just plugged in their personal USB device and they want to just take their file home for the weekend to work on it at home or whatever. You'll notice that they get this pop-up window that says blocked confidential data detected and they get a prompt uh, the file serial number information to tat.txt you're attempting to move, copy, save, or transfer violates the following security policies, confidential data policy. And this text is all configurable, so you can have this say whatever you like to your users. And you can also have the user be able to provide you with a response. So this is more for a user education protocol or whatever you'd like to, however you'd like to perform user education in your environment. This is a really great way to do it because these are also configurable as well. You can have any of these options say whatever you like. And when they click OK, that's going to be saved along with the incident that's generated in the DLP Enforce server. So anything that the user types in, um, just doing what I'm told to do. You know, in this particular case, it's still going to block the transfer. But if you set it to monitor mode during your user education process, that'll help to give you a better oversight of what exactly is going on in your organization, 
how your classified data is being used, what users are trying to do with it, and provide a good edu education opportunity for your users to say, hey, this is confidential data. You're not supposed to be doing this with it. You know, we have established business practices that we want to adhere to and that type of thing. So now let's, since they weren't able to transfer it to their removable device, maybe they might want to open up their webmail and send it home that way. And this just navigates to our uh, enforce server login by our homepage. So ignore that. And let's try to go to gmail.com. And you'll see right away here, um, this is a temp file that was generated by Internet Explorer. So this is something that is a sort of a work in progress. You have to edit the policy so that you don't get false positive for temp files and things of that nature. So this is an Internet Explorer, and it's important to know that this is monitoring traffic at the HTTPS protocol because it's monitoring the traffic at the application layer, not the, the traffic that's going over the network. So yes, this is an encrypted hypertext transfer protocol session, but the DLP agent is monitoring for sensitive data being transferred at the application, not the network. So yes, this is an encrypted session, but it doesn't care. It's still going to capture that. Um, it's still going to record and search for attempts to send confidential data through your browser because it's monitoring the actual application itself. And it can do this for either Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox, and they're currently working on a solution for Google Chrome, but that is to be released in a future version. Now, let's see what happens when the user tries to copy the file to his Gmail and right away you again you'll see that that confidential data transfer was blocked because it contains insensitive information that violates the security policy and again you'll get the same pop-up um, let's just go ahead and click a different option this time so by now the user is probably getting pretty frustrated that they can't you know export this data somehow or maybe they just don't know what they're doing isn't allowed by the organization so they might try a couple of other things um, there's a free program called AxeCrypt, which will allow you to encrypt the file. And if if the Symantec endpoint protect, excuse me, Symantec data loss prevention product can't search for the information in the file, so for example, an encrypted file, um, it doesn't know to look for those keywords, so it can't have visibility into the file. If it doesn't have visibility into the file, it can't run any scanning or searching on the file, and it can't generate any incidents. So there's a couple ways you can handle this problem. One is to flat out block any type of encrypted file from being sent that it knows of. So .pgp, um, .axi, any type of encrypted file that the user might try and send, you can flat out block all types of encrypted files, or you can just block certain programs using uh, application monitoring. So I've installed a third-party application called AxeCrypt on this endpoint, and when I try to encrypt the file, you're again going to get uh, the same error. You're, you violated the policy by trying to copy data that contains sensitive data or sensitive information to uh, however you've tried to do it. So now let's take a look at what happens when they try and copy it to a Dropbox. So this is a little bit of a special case. When a user tries to copy a file to their Dropbox folder that contains sensitive data, you'll get an incident right away that says the same thing that you've been seeing for all of the previous incidents. Um, and you, you can notice that there's a little green checkbox by these other files that are saved in the cloud right now. And there's this little blue refresh wheel kind of thing logo which lets you know that it hasn't been sent to the cloud yet. And as long as this file sits in this folder, the Dropbox agent is going to keep trying to submit it. So every time it tries to send it again, it's going to block it again. And you'll see that just popped up from the DLP agent trying, or from the, excuse me, the Dropbox agent trying to resend the file. Every time it tries to resend the file to the cloud, it's going to block the transfer and create an incident. So we're going to move that file out of there to stop that for now. But even though you move that file to that folder, it's never going to make it to Dropbox. It's just going to be in this folder in Windows, but the Dropbox agent is never going to allow that, or the DLP agent is never going to allow the Dropbox agent to send it off to Dropbox. 
Um, and that is a little bit of a special case because that is done by application monitoring. That's a custom application monitoring, and DLP will monitor that program by the Dropbox executable file. So the DLP agent is looking at Dropbox.exe to monitor for sensitive data leaving through that application. So what if the user tries to rename the file as a zip or anything else? It doesn't really matter, but we'll rename it as a zip just to try and kind of sneak it through. Because now it's a different file, so maybe the agent might not pick it up, right? Well, the DLP agent is looking at the file headers, so it really doesn't matter what the extension is. If that file contains any sensitive data that it can see, it's going to block the transfer. You can also set the DLP agent to monitor the Windows clipboard so that whenever an, a user tries to copy any sensitive data, it's going to generate an incident and block that attempt as well. So let's open up our sensitive documents here. Go to our serial number file and just highlight some of this data which contains some um, classified serial number information and right click on it and try to do a copy command. You'll notice that the clipboard content, uh, or the clipboard has blocked the copy attempt because it violates the confidential data policy. So there's one more common way that a user might try to get data off of the endpoint, and that is by printing it off and just taking it that way. So if you have a very malicious user who is intent on getting this data off of your system and they try and print the data, we'll take a look at what happens then. So if I try to print this file containing sensitive data, you'll notice that the DLP agent has blocked the attempt because it contains sensitive data that violates the confidential data policy. And this is done by the DLP agent monitoring the print spooler. So if it finds any confidential data in that file queue, it's going to just delete the print attempt right away. And you'll see here, your file waiting to be printed was deleted. Um, that's because the DLP agent had blocked it because it contained sensitive data. So before we close out the demonstration, I just want to take a few minutes and show you where these policies are located in the DLP Enforce server and just look at them really quickly. So we will go to our Enforce server login. And if you're not familiar with the Enforce platform or the Enforce platform interface, I do recommend to check out some other videos on our channel. We've got some really great documentation and videos on everything about the Enforce server so you can see exactly where policies are. Um, but for now, we're just going to go to Manage and go to our policy list. And you'll notice that we have one active policy, and that's the confidential data policy. If you remember from the pop-ups, that's the policy that was being violated. So we'll open up that policy, and you'll see that here down in our rules, these are the keywords it was looking for. So all of those keywords in the file, that's how the DLP agent was checking for confidential data. So I've separated these into a list of delimited by commas, and it's very important that when you configure rules in this way, using keywords, that whether you've separated them by lines or commas, that you also check the corresponding keyword separator because if you don't have it correct it's not going to generate any incidents. So we'll click OK to exit out of that. And we'll take a look at the response rule here. And you notice that we have one response rule of the endpoint prevent block action. So we'll open it up to take a look at what's inside. And like I mentioned before, um, all of that text that you see in those pop-ups that come up, that's all customizable, so you can have it say whatever you like. Also, you can choose up to four options in the dialog, um, as well as a custom text explanation. You can have these say whatever you want as well. So maybe for user education, you could say something like, um, I didn't realize the data was confidential. The point is you can rename these, or not rename these, type any text you like into there. Um, it's all customizable. So that entire little pop-up window you kept seeing every time an incident was generated, 
based on the user trying to uh, do things with the data that they shouldn't have been doing, that is all customizable, what you can tell your user. So that's a really great feature of DLP. So this concludes our demonstration for the day. I hope that it was educational, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our team here at ITS by visiting itsdelivers.com.